Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, this is a great day for the Mooney Valley Race Club. And we are delighted, I think probably formally now, because there's probably not much surprise in all of this, um, to formally advise that we'll be partnering, partnering with, or well, our club will be partnering as a major sponsor of our uh, Wait for Age uh, Championship race, the WS Cox Plate, with Labrokes. Labrokes have signed a record eight year term as our new naming rights sponsor, commencing on the 1st of August this year. Labrokes will acquire the naming rights to the Cox Plate Carnival as well as the two jewels in the crown, the WS Cox Plate and the Manicato Stakes. In addition, Labrokes will also have naming rights to Friday Night Racing at the Valley, which uh, now will be known as Labrokes Friday Night Lights, and I'm sure it will light up. This partnership also includes the popular 55 Second Challenge, our unique race series that sees the 955 metre sprint uh, heats on every night of our uh, night race meeting series. Labrokes, the world's oldest bookmaker, has been in operation since 1886, but only began its operations in Australia in 2013. In the four years since, it has made a significant contribution to Australian sport and racing, of course. And this announcement uh, strengthens its support of thoroughbred racing here in Victoria. This partnership uh, with Labrokes is the largest commercial deal that the Mooney Valley Racing Club has entered into and comes at a time when we're about to embark upon one of our most exciting chapters in the 134 year history of our great club. Recently, the 2016 WS Cox Plate was crowned the number one turf race at the prestigious Long Jeans Best Race Awards in London. It was a huge thrill for all of us at Mooney Valley and our, our great club and a great honour to see our race as rated the best race in the world, the best turf race, I should say, in the world. At the same event, our Cox Plate heroine, Winx, was crowned the best turf horse in the world. This year, we'll witness the running of the 97th WS Cox Plate, or should I say, the Labrokes WS Cox Plate. And we eagerly await the return of Winx as she looks to win her third Cox Plate. If she can re uh, achieve this remarkable victory, she will join Kingston Town as a Cox Plate immortal. Through this partnership, we will build towards the 100th running of the, the uh, Labrokes WS Cox Plate in 2020. And this will be a fantastic cele celebration of the uh, Cox Plate history. The wall behind me, as you can all see, features the 96 winners of the Cox Plate, all of them great champions of the turf. The club will also continue to promote the Cox Plate internationally and continue our strategy to invite the world's leading international middle distance horses to Mooney Valley to make our signature race a truly global contest. I'd like to thank the team at Labrokes for their support of the Mooney Valley Racing Club. We look forward to working with them and bringing together this exciting partnership. In particular, thanks to uh, CEO Jason Scott. Uh, and thanks, Jason. I know you've just uh, come back from, uh, from London and uh, so we really appreciate you being here today. I look forward to our two brands working together for the betterment of our members, Labrokes customers, the Valley, the Cox Plate, night racing, and of course, 
the great Labrogs brand. It's now my very great uh, pleasure to invite Jason to uh, say a few words. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Don. Uh, Labrogs are very excited to announce this partnership today, which uh, further um, commits us to Victorian racing for the next eight years. We are not only excited to be part of the Cox Plate, the Manicato and other, the other great races, but what we can put back into gra grassroots racing here every Friday night is just as important to us as the Group 1s. I'd like to thank Don and Michael and their team for the professional way that um, we've been able to deal with them during negotiations. And it's a great show of faith in us and also for, and returned by us an eight year term for any sort of sponsorship in this country and any sport is just about unheard of. Um, I was lucky enough to be here a month ago on a Friday night and Michael showed uh, Don a picture of the artist's sketches of one of the tenderers of the New Mooney Valley. It's fair to say Don was a little bit excited. So our term will obviously engage and will be involved through that and we can't wait for the new Mooney Valley and the new Cox Plate. I'd also like to thank you for coming down today. Um, we're obviously on the brink of history here with Winks winning two. I see no reason why she can't win three, four and maybe five as an eight year old. Uh, thank you all for coming um, and Labrakes are really happy to be part, part of the Mooney Valley life. Thank you. Huey, thanks for coming down. Um, three, four, five cox plates, as, as Jay said. No pressure, mate. Uh, well, it, it's a lovely thought, isn't it? But one step at a time, and uh, certainly with the support of Ladbrokes for the next eight years, it's a great initiative, and uh, cer certainly thankful for their their support. And hopefully, we can come back here um, in October, and uh, she can race at the same level that we've seen to do so over the last couple of years. When you walk through the gates of the Mooney Valley Racing Club and, and you walk in here and you, you see the Ladbrokes Cox Plate sitting right there and you realise you are on the brink of history, how does it make you feel? Uh, well, I'm very humbled by it, very proud to be a part of Winx's career. Um, you know, for me, I guess when, when it's all over and in years to come I'll look back at it and have more of an appreciation of uh, just how special it is, but at the moment for me it's just about getting the job done and you know obviously I'm as hopeful as everybody else that Wings can continue uh, on doing what she does best and that's race at a level that we haven't seen for some time so uh, she's obviously it's a great privilege to be a part of her career and um, you know with, with that carries a lot of weight of expectation and a lot of, a lot of weight of uh, am, ambition, I guess, uh, not only from those of us involved with her, but uh, everyone else too. So, uh, w with that responsibility comes a lot of extracurricular activities, I guess you might call it. And um, you know, I guess ultimately, if we, if she can keep going the way she's going, it, it, I, I will look back on it in years to come. I'm sure with a great deal of satisfaction and appreciation of. Uh, how, how good she is, but for the moment it's just about uh, one run at a time and you know just making sure, well I guess you know it's really Chris Waller's um, department and make sure she keeps ticking over in the manner that she has for the last little while, but for me it's about just providing her the opportunity on race day to do what she does best. You spoke about uh, you know how she's tracking and going forward and getting better. Two runs this prep have been uh, pretty awesome. She goes into the George Ryder on will probably be a, another wet Sydney track. How how is she in terms of over over the span of her career? Where do you think she is now? Is she at the highest level she's been? She was rated this morning as the highest rated race horse. Uh, yes, I don't think she ran to a rate. You know, she's not yet rated as high as she was last year though. So it's early days. I think there's improvement there for her this autumn carnival. Um, you know, certainly. The, the feel she gave me on Tuesday morning suggests that she's starting to get to a level that she was when she won the Cox Plate here last year. So 
that to me is very exciting. And um, you know, in saying that, though, I think the George Ryder Stakes, you know, will pose probably the most competitive event for her in some time. Um, probably, with the exclusion of last year's Cox Plate, it'll probably be the most competitive event she's ever been in. In the fact that it's 1500 metres, so it's probably short of her best distance. And she's going to take on some serious competition in Chautauqua, La Romaine and others. But, uh, you know, I think those two horses put the riding on the wall in the Canterbury Stakes the other day that uh, they're certainly up for the challenge. And, you know, we're, we're, going to, we're, we're going to know where we're at anyway. Competitive, so she only wins by three lengths. <laughs> it, it, the res we saw Peter Moody with Black Caviar thrust him into that national spotlight, Luke Nolan as well. You're a pretty unassuming guy. How did you deal? I mean, you spoke about the added responsibility that comes with riding a horse the calibre of Winks. How do you, you deal with the fact that uh, people now, you know, non-racing people know who Hugh Bowman is? Yeah, I guess it's, um, again, it comes, responsibility comes with that. But um, I've got my darling wife, Christine, and two young daughters. They... Um, they certainly keep my mind occupied, I can assure you. So, you know, life for me is very real. And, you know, I guess being a part of Winx's career, um, you know, the one thing that I would like to acknowledge and, um, you know, I'm so pleased that, it, that she came along, um, you know, I guess in the mature part of my career, you know, because if a horse, came, horse like this came along in my early or mid-20s, I don't think I'd have the appreciation of just how good she is and just what she's done for me, um, you know, as a person and, and as a professional. But, you know, having been, you know, now that I'm in my mid-30s and, you know, I, I've, I've experienced, you know, ro racing all over the world, um, you know, I'm very thankful for that and fortunate. But, you know, I, I really do have an appreciation of how good she is. And that that is because I've been lucky enough to ride some of the best horses in Australia over the last 10 or 15 years. and. You know, the, the, there's there's a couple of other really genuine world-class horses in, in, in those horses that I've ridden, namely Reliable Man, uh, So You Think, and, and Werther, who I'm currently riding in Hong Kong. They probably stand above um, all others, but Winx is, an, is another level again. And I guess, you know, being at the age I'm at, I can really appreciate um, how, how good she is. You're riding another pretty handy one tomorrow. Still looking for that elusive Group 1 in Spieth. Uh, you have escaped the Sydney wet to get down to the sunny Melbourne conditions and, and out onto Flemington. Uh, it is a favourite uh, with Ladbrokes, I think $3.40 for tomorrow's new market handicap. How's uh, he tracking? Are you confident he can uh, overcome the hurdle and, and get through and, and uh, break his Group 1 duck? Yeah, I am confident. I think, um, you know, the market suggests that he's obviously the one to beat. Um, Barrier one, I've been asked, is that a concern? It, it's not really, but what I would like to say is I don't think it's ideal that I've drawn on one side of the track and you know the what, what appear to be the obvious main dangers have drawn on the other side of the track. So I would have preferred to to have drawn around those other horses, but it's it's not the case. But you know, having ridden him in the in the Lightning Stakes three weeks ago, I, you know, obviously I, I have more of an understanding of the horse. Uh, now going into tomorrow's race and, you know, I think, you know, I, th I think he's the one to beat and, you know, I'm hoping he can perform at a level that he has um, at, at the Flemington straight course or in the couple of runs that he's had there because if he can, he'll, uh, he'll certainly make his presence felt. Hopefully the inside's a place to be and you're laughing. Thanks very much for, for coming down and being part of this announcement for uh, this eight-year term between Ladbrokes and the Mooney Valley Racing Club and hopefully... Uh, you are holding that aloft on that one Saturday in October and Winks has made it uh, three in a row and equaled the great Kingston town. I'd like to throw it open now uh, to the media who would no doubt have some questions for you, Hugh. Thank you. Fire, Fire away. I think she can, yes. I think the form from the race two weeks ago was obviously the form going into this race uh it's almost the same field in fact as the race at caulfield so uh i'm going to need some luck from the draw uh naturally it is a bit of an awkward barrier but you know there's plenty of time to get organized and i guess it's a it's a race where i'm having difficulty sort of working out what sort of pace i can expect you know i think it's a race that could be run at a really solid clip 
or it could be a race that I, I very much doubt it'll be run as slowly as it was last year when Preferment won. But you know, if it's if it's not run genuinely, it could pose to be an awkward position for me from barrier 11. But um, look, I've, it's something I can only work out once the gates are open. Just with Smith last last time, what did you learn about him? Sort of that you might be able to use. To uh, look, I think he was a little bit hesitant, uh, taking the tight gap between Flamberge and Star Turn. So. You know, that's something, you know, if I've, I'm still confident he'll go through a gap, but I'd love it if there was a bit more room for him. Um, you know, even early on in the race, I was trying to keep Terra Vista behind Flying Artie, and, you know, my horse just wasn't comfortable being bottled up, so I just allowed him to move, do a bit more room, and that sort of allowed Terra Vista through to race beside me. And, you know, just little things, but, you know, I think... Um, what I loved about the horse was when he when he got through the gap, um, he, he really attacked the line. So from that, I take a great deal of confidence. And he did the same when Brad Rewilla rode him at, in the Daly Classic. He, he when, when, when he got out and got balanced, he, he really attacked the line. So, you know, I, I think I'll ride the horse. I, I don't think I'm more confident than I was in the Lightning because I was very confident going into that race. But, you know, I'm... I'm very confident that I've just having that, having had that one ride on him, um, getting to know, you know, a couple of little idiosyncrasies might, might be, you know, probably gives me more confidence that I can do the job for him. You've been suspended for the last couple of weeks. Is there any change in preparation in terms of coming into a meeting off suspension in terms of not riding? Do you have to do anything different to? Get yeah, that is different because I'm not going to the races. Um, more gym time. Um, and, you know, I had a good set of trials yesterday, but, yeah, just um, really a bit more time in the gym and apart from that, not a, much, not, not a lot else, just ticking over. I mean, I, I felt my fitness uh, when I was suspended was probably at its peak, so what I've had to do really is just keep ticking over, but naturally um, I'm looking forward to getting to the races uh, tomorrow for the first... I think I've ridden two meetings in three weeks, so um, let, let's hope I'll go well fresh. You, what do you make the decision from Caulfield Cup to move away from their tradition? Away from uh, yeah, that's a good... Yeah, I'm pleased you asked. Yeah, I think it's a very positive move. Um, the reason I think that is because I think, um, despite most of Australia's top races... Um, being handicaps on a, on a world scale, uh, handicaps just aren't recognised as top class races, and I think I think it could really benefit. I think it will benefit the Caulfield Cup. That's my personal opinion. Uh, I think it'll attract better overseas competition, and I think in turn for that uh, could help boost the Melbourne Cup to be a better race than it already is. So. Whether it's going to affect the Ladbrokes Cox Plate, I guess you're not going to know that until, um, you know, probably, you know, if they go ahead with it, it's probably going to take five years before you can really judge whether it's help or helped or hindered. But uh, I, in my opinion, it can only help because I think it'll attract better overseas competition and uh, therefore um, promote racing here in Australia uh, more than it already has. And um, I. I Personally, I think it'll become a better race. It might also attract um, the Australian market to buy better overseas horses. Um, you know, instead of trying to buy the horses for the Melbourne Cup, they're, they're trying to buy low-rating horses with high ability. They'll be able to probably, you know, it might give them the option to, or, or the, or the, um, the access or to spend more money. Um, in, to buy better class, bet, you know, higher rated gallopers and aim towards the Caulfield Cup and then on to the Melbourne Cup with the Ladbrokes Cox Plate in between.